Right now it is time for Food for Mood. With who? With Dr. Judy Wortman, of course. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet. Also, before her voice was still a friendship in the shadow of ALS and Journal of a Duck Midwife. And I'm sure Judy's prepared for cold weather, too. Good morning, Dr. Wortman. <laughs> Good morning to you, and I'm sort of shocked when you talked about the drop in temperature. Uh, as much as we hated the, the almost 100-degree weather we had here, I'm not sure we're ready for an early frost. Yeah, but hope, the, it will, hope it'll be delayed. I learned from a, a person years ago who grew up in the Midwest, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but it sure, she, 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 she certainly sounded authoritative when she said it, that um, if you, when you hear your first cricket, you are six weeks from the first frost. I've heard my first cricket. I heard it last week. And I heard my first me. cricket, too, and <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh. And oh, well, well. it was really comical because in the vernacular now, you know, people, if you say, did you hear anything? Oh, I heard crickets, which means nothing. You know, they, they, they think it means nothing. It's like, no, no, no. It's so quiet oh, that you hear Oh, that's the, funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're real. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, what, what are the reasons that I, I sent you the article I did, which is about perhaps convincing the uh, world that makes uh, instrumentation to measure all sorts of things related to our body health. Um, the reason I said this to you is that I saw an advertisement on TV, you know, as one always does, in which a man is sort of putting his thumbs or fingers on some something that looks like a, a playing card on, on the table, and then within seconds, all sorts of measurements are made about his heart health, his blood pressure, his pulse rate, whether he needs a pacemaker or not, whatever. And I'm thinking to my, and he's, he's shocked and pleased and delighted that all this information which is not being collected from him is going to be sent to his doctor, and therefore there will be, you know, off-site monitoring of his, of his health. And I thought to myself, wow, if you can do that, why hasn't anybody in all these decades or any company come up with a better way of measuring what in our body is contributing to our weight? I mean, our, you know, we're made up of, of water, of muscle, of bones, of fat. And when we weigh ourselves on a scale, which has been around for who knows how long, you know, Egyptians actually, because they used to weigh your soul against the sins you might have committed to decide whether you go to the afterlife up or down. Um, your scale has been around forever, but what they weigh has never really advanced beyond simply putting a number on a scale that says, yes, you weigh so many pounds or stones or kilograms or whatever the weight is, or diamonds or jewels if you're in India and a Maharaji. And the reason I say this is that there are many situations in which your weight can fluctuate not because you are, have gone on a diet, for example, but because you're losing other aspects of your, uh, uh, other components of your body that is contributing to your weight. I mean, for example, if you are a, or, or you may gain for the same reason, if you are a, a dedicated bodybuilder, then you may be putting on pounds of new muscle because this is what you spend your day doing. Get on a scale and you look at your weight and your height and if one does a calculation for something called the BMI or the body mass index uh, based on your height and how much you weigh, you could find yourself in the obese category. Not because you have fat, but because so much of your weight is being contributed by muscle. However, the BMI doesn't distinguish between whether the weight is fat or muscle or water, nor does your scale. Conversely, let's just say that you have a treatment for, I don't know, prostate cancer. And the treatment to these days might be to totally wipe out your testosterone. The effect of that is to pretty much wipe out your muscle. Not all of it, but a great deal. So all of a sudden you've lost muscle and you get on the scale and you say, wow, look at my, all the weight I've lost. I mean, really, this diet I'm on or non-diet I'm on really must be reducing my fat mass. Uh-uh. It all it do is taking away your muscle. But the scale won't tell you that. And, and, and you may be deluded into thinking that your body really is in great shape, but it really isn't. And the problem is that other than the scale, there really aren't any at-home devices that will tell you this. I mean, there's something called um, bioelectric impedance, which is a, a measurement of how rapidly electrical impulses are taken up by different components of your body. And some scales actually have this built in. You, you stand on uh, 
foot pads that measure this electrical con- conductivity, or you put your hands on con- hand bar- handlebars, and it tells you supposedly how much fat or water or lean body mass you might have in your in your body. But that can be altered by whether you've just had a meal, whether you are hydrated, whether you are not, whether you have not had enough water, whether you've been sweating, um, what kind of activity you have. It's not considered a particularly accurate measurement. Or you can take something called skin calipers, which look like big tweezers, and sort of see whether you have, uh, and measure sort of skin folds, which supposedly are measuring also the fat underneath the skin. But that is something that if you're really done correctly, it has to be done under supervision with a lot of practice. You know, sometimes if you go to a gym, a trainer will try to do this on you, and most of the time the measurements are simply not accurate. It may give you a vague idea about how much fat you have in your body, but it probably won't tell you certainly how much muscle you have. And the rest of the measurements are things that you have to do in a laboratory or in a special clinic. For example, being weighed underwater. Um, you, you, you sit on a scale underwater, um, and, you me- and the measurement underwater and it is related to your measurement above water, and it tells you something about bone density, which may contribute to your weight or not. And the other way, is, and perhaps the most effective way, but you don't do this every day to see whether you're losing weight, is something called DEXTA, which is a, an X-ray that's taken of your body, People use this when they are worried about getting, whether they have osteoporosis or not, because it measures bone density. And it measures how much of your weight, it measures simply what part of your body is contributed by muscle mass, by fat, by water, by bone. And that is extremely accurate. However, it's expensive. Your insurance has to pay for it. You need an appointment. These days, you may take months before you can get an appointment because of the results of the pandemic. And it's certainly, it's not going to tell you every day whether you are losing weight of fat because you're losing fat, whether you are gaining weight because you're putting on muscle, whether you should increase or decrease your diet to change these various components. And my question is, why hasn't anybody come up with a better way of telling us this? I mean, if you can tell people whether they're about to have a, you know, a seizure or a heart attack or you know, diabetes or the glucose out of control or anything else, why can't we tell why, what in our body is contributing to our weight? Because of, uh, well, you use the word, because the Decepticons are in charge. If you wanted to give someone a device that really did that, you could. But instead, you've got these commercials that you, you oh, you have an app. Your, your, your app is supposed to do this. People absolutely do not, absolutely, I'm sorry, couldn't <laughs> help it, d- cannot bring themselves to understand that all they are doing when they are playing with their apps is giving the information about themselves. When is your period? This, 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 this. When are you ovulating? When are you, I'm, sorry for the female stuff. How much do you weigh? Um, what, what medicines are you All you're doing yeah. is giving that information to other people. Oh, and, you know, and, and it's very deceptive. I, years ago, and I, we did a study looking at uh, women w- w- with women who uh, were thin, and they, they had been avid sm- smokers, but really had trouble giving up smoking. But they agreed to go to a smoking abstinence program, um, and we wanted to see whether they would gain weight or not. And one of the reasons they decided never to give up smoking until they went into our program was because they were afraid of gaining weight, and that they used nicotine as a way of keeping their weight stable. So we, with their permission, looked at their body composition, how much of each component of their body was contributing to their weight, and really to our, our amazement that their body, the, the fat mass that they carried around with them would be equal to somebody who might have been obese, but they lost, a, but they had no muscle. And so their weight was low, but if you looked at how fit they were, they were totally unfit. But in, until we did that measurement, which was done, I said, in a special machine, et cetera, no, we wouldn't have known, they wouldn't have known, they would have been thinking, wow, you know, nicotine really is keeping me thin. No, it was just, just keeping their fat mass, making their fat mass higher than their muscle, but their muscle was low enough, so the scale said, you're thin. But it was a total fake. And, and that's what I meant, that it, it would have been so much better if they could have put their hands on something and the little beep said, wow, your fat mass is going up, but you don't have any muscle left. You better start exercising and give up smoking. Yeah. So it really does have utility. Oh, yeah. No, no, it really does. Um, and, and again, it's really, I'm being told that we are having such a good time that we have to pick this up later. <laughs> but it All really, yeah, it really All matters. Right. All right. Anyway, talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Dr. Judy Wortman, Food for Mood.